Hi there, it's Gabrielle Nicolet from Speech Kids coming to you live from my car. Um, and I w just came from seeing a little person um, and we did some new things and that got me thinking about um, novelty and wondering, I want to ask you, how does your child deal with new experiences? Um, and the reason it's interesting is for, um, uh, there are a couple of different reasons. So when um, there are some there are some temperament differences that uh, lead to children processing novelty or new things um, in different ways. So like there are the kids who just like they rush in, you know, first thing they're not looking sideways, they're not looking left, they're not looking right, they are going for it right away. Um, and then there are the kids who they hang back a little bit, right? And they want to get the lay of the land. Um, they want, they're looking to you to see if this new experience is safe, if this new person is safe. Um, and we talked a little bit about, right, that how does your child handle it when a new person comes to the door? Um, and if that new person is grandma, you know? Um, but how do they handle like a new food that you put on their plate? So some kids will watch you and see what you do with that new food. And if you crunch on it and love it and be like, oh, it's so good, um, your child will follow suit in, in a lot of cases. Some kids are going to eat whatever you put in front of them because they're like, yeah, something new, give it to me. And then there are some kids who seemingly, no matter what you do, will not go for something new. The new things are terrifying, scary, threatening, take your pick, right? They are noxious. Um, and a lot of times what I see in my practice is kids who are um, having speech and language difficulties, they've sort of learned that they, um, that new things are scary, that new things are hard, and that new things are creating a situation where they can't succeed. Um, and it's kind of heartbreaking when you think about it, because especially if you're dealing with somebody who's two or under, like you just don't want there to be anything that's preventing them from learning about the world, right? Because let's face it, when you're young, that young, everything is new. You don't know. Um, you know, if you're walking for the first time and you step on a Cheerio in your house, that's a first, like you don't know what that thing is. Um, if your brain is wired to, to perceive that Cheerio on the floor that you're stepping on for the first time as a threat, um, you're gonna freak out and you're gonna go into this level of high stress, right? And where you, you can't learn and you're, and you're just in safety mode. Um, and so those kids who are avoiding new experiences um, they're in safety mode. They're protecting themselves from failure, from danger. Um, and their brains are sort of overactive, overactively protecting themselves. Um, versus, again, like, um, you know, the kiddo who they're getting up to walk, oftentimes the early walkers, um, and they are just stepping on everything in the middle between them and their goal, and they don't care at all. Um, right? The, those are just the go-getters. And, and so even in that new experience of stepping on something they've never stepped on before, um, it, it's not bothering them. They're taking it in, they're registering it, and then they're moving on. Um, so it's, it can be really illuminating to think about how your child is processing novelty and to think about if your child is really fearful about new things that you might have to back it up a step. Um, you're, if your child is fearful and avoiding new things, new words, new people, new situations, you know, um, you might have to reduce temporarily the demands that you're placing on your kiddo so that they can get comfortable where they're at and secure where they're at. Um, and it, it's really, really important if you're going to take risks that you feel safe. And so oftentimes when I see kids who are not taking risks, who are fearful, um, sometimes it's because that's how they're wired sort of internally or, you know, temperament, temperamentally. 
sometimes it's because they're not, sometimes it's because it's, they have a fearful temperament and their environment is not set up to support that, um, that temperament. And so they're not getting the support, the scaffolding that they need in order to be confident in new situations. And so if you see your kid being afraid of new things to try new things, you might want to temporarily dial it down um, and actually not ask them to do so many new things. Ask them to do the things that they're good at um, or not ask them to do anything else, any, anything at all and just let them go and do their what they prefer to do. And then gradually as they build confidence, um, you can start to introduce novelty by you doing it. Again, back to that, um, you know, the scenario where you put the new food on the tray. Um, even the fact that they can tolerate a new food on their, on their tray of their high chair is a step. That's a great step. Right? Because it means they're accepting of it. Now they're not wading in with both both hands and like shoving their their hands in their faces. Okay, fine. You'll get there. Uh, slow steps because pushing somebody into an experience they're not ready for. Um, hi Debbie, thanks for joining us. Um, pushing somebody into an experience that they're not ready for is not gonna lead to success. Um and if you've ever tried to push your little person into an experience they weren't ready for, uh, you know that it probably led to a major meltdown. Um, you want to give me a like if that's ever happened to you where you were like, no, no, this is really fun. And you push them, push them, push them, push them, and they weren't ready and they fell apart. Um, so, you know, it, it, there are times where you can push. And there are times when you just need to go back and lay some more groundwork for security and foundations and trust. Um, that security and attachment is key. Thank you, Debbie. Yes, it's key. Um, you have to, your child must trust you completely. Because if you're going to throw new situations at them all the time and they're not ready for them, they're just going to shut down. They're just going to shut down and you don't want that. We want our kids happy. We want our kids confident. We want our kids showing what they can do and we want to be right there um, supporting them in that effort. So um, some thoughts on, on novelty and how to work into it slowly at the right pace for your child. Your child is going to give you lots of cues about how much novelty they can and cannot tolerate. They're going to tell you. Take the time to watch their cues. If they are really digging in their heels about getting in the sandbox at the playground or about saying hi to grandma when she shows up and gets in their face, take their cues. Show your child that you are there for them, that you are giving them the support that they need in order to get into and get through these new experiences. Um, so there you go. There's your thought for the day. And, um, oh, I wanted to mention the toddler talk enrollment is open. So, um, if you're on the list already and you've taken the free parenting toddler workshop, um, Debbie, I don't know if you've taken it or not. I'm hoping that you have and that you found it helpful. Um, but so if you're on the list, you got the email that Toddler Talk is um, now open. Toddler Talk is a four week um, class, lots of video um, modules and content for you in 20 minute chunks. And then a free, uh, excuse me, a live um, video conference call Wednesdays at noon with me. If you can't make the conference call, don't worry, you'll get the recording. Um, but we're going to talk about the content. You got to ask your questions, your specific questions about um, your child. So I'm, I'm super excited about this, um, about the Toddler Talk class that's coming up starting Monday. Um, those videos will stop, start dropping. So the cart is open. Um, if you want to find out more, you can go to speechkids.com slash toddler workshop. That gets you on the list. And then you can... Um, sign up for um, on the website. I think there's also a link at speechkids.com for the 
toddler talk four week workshop as well. So I hope to see you there. Um, in the meantime, have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.